Amen. Again, thank you so much for being here tonight. Such a good crowd, and we're so glad that you were able to come. Come on in, have a seat. And uh, so glad that uh, you're here. We've got some more people I know who are drifting. We had a brand new family uh, that are here tonight. You get a chance, you want to say hello to them before they leave. They got three or four children that they just took down to the children's area. Uh, and um, Candace is working, getting them into their appropriate places. So we're excited about that. Uh, said they uh, came by this church all the time and said we've always wanted to stop. Uh, we saw all the food distribution and uh, uh, they said, you know what, that seems like a nice church. And I said, well, we are and we're glad to have you here. So they came for their first time tonight. You'll get a chance to meet a young couple that's here. Okay, you got your Bibles. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 8. I know many of you are here tonight uh, and we are recording so that it's going to be put on uh, our website on, by, far, uh, by Friday Many of you are just wondering uh, what I'm going to say about Halloween, because Halloween is our topic for tonight, and some of you are probably wondering, is Pastor Bill going to destroy my celebration of Halloween? Uh, I, one a few years ago, uh, I did this at a church at Hill Station, and I had a lady come up to me, and she was very angry at me, and I said, Rachel, what's wrong? She goes, now I have to go home and tear down my entire house. Uh, she had decorated. She was really big into Halloween celebration. I said, well, I didn't mean to do that. I'm just telling you what the Bible had to say. But I'm not here uh, to destroy anything. I'm not here uh, to cause you to feel guilty. I'm just here to present to you facts and then let you choose what you're going to do. we got trick-or-treat coming up on Saturday night. And uh, sometimes you just wonder what uh, uh, people are going to say or do. But my whole purpose is that you as Christians... Can we can make an intelligent and a spiritual decision about how we should celebrate this so-called holiday. Now, I struggle with preaching with something that's not very popular because I'm reminded of a passage that Isaiah uh, gave to preachers about that. In Isaiah chapter 30, verse 10, the people said, And to the prophets, do not prophesy right things. Speak to us smooth things. Isn't that interesting? Do not prophesy to us right things. Speak to, speak to us smooth things. That's been a big thing among churches today. They're calling it being uh, friend, user-friendly. You know, make sure you don't offend anybody. Make sure you don't hurt anybody's feelings. Well, I'm not here for the purpose of offending you or hurting your feelings, but I am here for the purpose of telling you the truth. Uh, to prophesy for you uh, the truth. Now, I must admit, I've got to be careful, and, and I know that, because I can't allow my personal experiences uh, to cause me to be on a campaign against something that I totally despise every single year. Uh, some of you have heard my stories. Some of you have heard some of the things that have happened to me. I have personally encountered two demon-possessed people in my ministry. Uh, my family, for so many years, I uh, had gone under police protection uh, during Halloween because I had won a young boy uh, to Christ out of the Satan church, and the Satan church had declared my destruction. Uh, they broke into my church office, sold, se stole several things out of my office, put curses on them and bailed them back to me. They broke into our church. This is when I was in Goshen. They broke into our church and um, urinated in the four corners of the church as a way of cursing the church so that it would never be uh, blessed again. Uh, they threatened uh, my family constantly. Uh, they would call my wife and play very hard acid rock music and tell my wife that she, uh, they knew where my son was. He worked at Kmart at that time. They knew where he was. They knew that he was in the stock room. Uh, the constant harassment we went through for several years that they put us under police protection uh, so that uh, nothing would happen to us. And nothing did. God just protected us in a powerful way. And so I, I sometimes can't allow that uh, personal stuff that I've encountered with Satan to kind of influence me. But it has caused me to study harder and harder and harder uh, this topic. Now, I got to admit to you, uh, my personal opinion about this time of year has been uh, somewhat given because of the things I've gone through. But tonight, I'm going to stick to the facts. Tonight, I'm going to stick to the Scripture, and tonight, I'm going to let you work out your own personal belief about Halloween. But I will say, all that I'm going to share with you comes from one powerful Scripture that says a lot to us, 
And if you believe the Bible, notice I use the word if, because I hope that you do. But believing the Bible, then you've got to believe the entire word. And so you've got to believe what God is teaching us about this subject. Everybody got 1 Peter chapter 5? Let's read one verse, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary... Now stop there for a moment, look up here. He tells us, be sober, tells us to be vigilant. In other words, be on guard, because you have an adversary. Now the interesting thing about Scripture... God never tells us anything without identifying that person for us. Let's go back and look at it. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Since the Bible is true, and I truly believe it is 100%, you have got to hear what is being written here. Be vigilant. Be sober. There is someone who exists in this world called the devil. And he's roaming around with only one purpose in mind, to destroy you and I, especially Christians. That's his whole purpose. Now, when you think of that and you believe that, then we know without a doubt that there is someone who wants to battle against us. Someone who does not want us to do the things that we're doing, and he is Satan himself. So what does that mean then, and how does that uh, come about as far as Halloween is concerned? Well, understand Halloween is a celebration. But the question comes, what is it celebrating? Let me say that to you again. What is it celebrating? How did the custom originate? As some claim it's just a fun time. That it's just something we enjoy? Or is it truly a day of Satan, demons, and evil is glorified? The celebration has turned out to be a multi-billion dollar business. It is only second to Christmas. It just passed Easter a few years ago. As far as decorations is bought, as far as candy is concerned, as far as parties that are thrown, it is the second biggest celebration in our country. Costumes, candy, food items, party supplies, greeting cards, movies, tours of so-called haunted houses and boats, all of them are entertainment that brings in billions of dollars on this holiday. Let us set the record straight and make it clear. Halloween is considered to be a pagan holiday. It's not a Christian holiday. It's a pagan holiday. Now, I said to you Sunday morning, that that's interesting, but so was Easter and so was Christmas. Easter was a pagan holiday that was a celebration of the worship of a goddess by the name of Esther. She was a fertility goddess, and they worshipped her by giving offerings in exchange for favors from the temple prostitutes. She represents what was called new life. She represents what is called a new beginning. That is why during Easter we see Easter bunnies because Easter bunnies are fertile animals. That's why we see eggs because they represent a new life and all the things that are there. But we as Christians several years ago was able to Christianize it. And Easter now is celebrated as the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We use that day to promote the Lord and all the things that surround the holiday. It is a Christian holiday, not a pagan holiday. What about Christmas? Christmas was a pagan holiday when it started. It was worshiping the god Samhain. Now, Samhain was the lord of death. Those who participated in that holiday realized that all things at that time of year, remember wintertime, died. You ever wonder why we have the Christmas tree? The Christmas tree was the only thing that stayed green during wintertime. You ever thought about that? It was the only thing that stayed green during wintertime. And so they took that tree because it was green and became a part of their pagan worship that they did. It was a part of the natural world that we celebrated. 
we as Christians were able to Christianize it. We took Christmas and turned it into the birth of Christ. And now everything around Christmas centers around Christians. We've never been able to do that with Halloween. Halloween is a pagan holiday, always has been a pagan holiday, and to this time it is a pagan holiday. It is a time in which they celebrate the souls that have died in the past year and a time when they believe that those souls are being released from this world and going into another world. They believe that the supernatural barrier between the two worlds have, are taken down during this time of the year. And that the spirit of the dead is set more freely among the human beings. The celebration was called Samhain, S-O-W-E-N. And was a very important night for a strong pagan, a pagan group of people called the Celtics. Now the Roman Catholic Church tried to Christianize it. They tried to take this holiday and make it into a Christian celebration. In fact, at one time... There was a time when they created a holiday called All Hallows' Eve. All Hallows' Eve was the night before Halloween, and it was a time in which they had a party, and they celebrated those saints who had died before them. That didn't work, so they changed it to what they used to call All Souls' Day. It was held shortly after Halloween. It was a time when you prayed for people who the Catholics believe that when they die, they go to purgatory, and when they're in purgatory, if you light enough candles and pray hard enough, that they'll be released out of purgatory to go to heaven. That's why you see all the candles in our Catholic church. Now, they're using those candles to try to get people out of purgatory. So they brought this holiday in, calling it All Souls Day. Unfortunately, none of these have worked. And Halloween has never been Christianized. And the question comes, why not? Because Halloween, my friends, is the highest holy day of Satan worship. It is Satanism's Easter to us. It is a day when they go all out. Now, if you do not believe that Satan worship is real, something's wrong. They're very real. They're very real in this area. They're very real everywhere. You can agree with me. They're there. You have them in school. People who are Satan worshipers, Wiccans, who are the witches. They're very real. I'm telling you, it's not something that is Hollywood. It is something that is real as can be. Halloween today is goblins, ghosts, witches. It means death. It means monsters. It means evil. People decorate their yards with tombstones and, cas and caskets for the purpose of only one thing, to scare you and to glorify everything that is wrong. Now, I must admit, they have found some ways to make those good looking. The ghosts look have smiles on their face. They do a lot of things to make them not look so mean so that you could do them. But the whole thing is... Everything around it is the celebration of the evil world, which the evil world is real. Trick-or-treating. That has nothing to do with evil. After all, we just go out and get candy. Those of us who are older remember the days when trick-or-treating was, we would go anywhere. My dad, would. we lived in the country. My dad would drive us to the city, my brother and I, because you couldn't walk a mile, two miles between houses to get candy. So dad would drive us to the city. Dad always drove us to the nice parts of the city. And they would let us out. My brother and I would trick or treat. Today, it has turned so evil that people are afraid to let their kids trick or treat. You take your candy to the hospital to have them x-rayed because of so many bad things that have happened. You see, trick-or-treating started out when the Celtics came down to the city and they would say to you, give me a treat or I will put a spell on your house, a trick on your house. That's how trick-or-treating started. The act of Halloween may seem harmless, but here is what I want you to think about. 
what is behind it. Most often it is important for us to know not what is going on, but what is behind what I'm celebrating. There are many things that may appear harmless, but by participating in them wrongly, notice I said the word wrongly, it can cause consequences. I will tell you things that you can do so that your children don't feel like because you're the uh, hard-hearted Christian that they can't do things. There are things I feel like you could do. But remember, when you do it wrongly, there are consequences. Just because it may appear harmless doesn't necessarily mean it will be. Adam and Eve did not think that eating the fruit off the tree was harmless. But what happened? Lot's wife didn't think it was harmless for her to turn around and take a look at the city she was leaving. What happened? She turned to Saul. Samson thought lying his head on Delilah's lap was harmless. But it cost him his life. Jonah thought if I didn't do what God said, skip those duties, it was harmless. I wasn't going to hurt anybody. But what took place? Peter thought lying, or lying, telling a lie around a fire would be harmless, but it almost cost him everything. I heard this quote many years ago, and I've always thrown it in this study because I like it. And I want to give it to you, and I'll repeat it two or three times. You may want to write it down because it's a good quote. It's something that we need to think about. You better begin with the end in mind. Now, it may sound confusing. Let me say it again. When you're going to do something, you better begin what you're going to do with the end in mind. In other words, if I do this, could it result into something later on that could be bad? Even though it looks harmless, even though I don't think it would affect anything, what could happen at the end? Who could it affect at the end? That's a very interesting way for us to check ourselves on a lot of events that take place in our life. Make sure that we do things that God does not promote may change everything that we do. Let me give you a second point. Satan absolutely loves Halloween. It's his day. Because it glorifies evil, puts fear in the lives of people, of his power. Satanists believe that Halloween is the night when demons and the devil are given special power. The night is recognized by the beginning of what is called the witch's year. Evil people pray for the dead on those nights. Sacrifices are made on that holiday. And many of those sacrifices in the Satan church are human sacrifices. They sacrifice babies who have no birth certificate. They're born of women who are willing to allow their child to be used for the worship of Satan. Therefore, they do not go to the hospital. Therefore, there is no record of that child's death. It's a real thing that begins. You might find this interesting. Many of you remember the song, The House of the uh, Hotel California. Your younger kids may not, uh, although it's, it plays a lot. Hotel California. Hotel California I used to be one of my favorite songs. I loved Hotel California. But have you ever listened to the words of Hotel California? If you happen to have an album cover of Hotel California, when it first came out, you'll see a big old hotel, an old-style hotel. If you look at the bottom left-hand corner of that album cover, There's a window in that hotel. Looking out that window is a guy by the name of Antoine LaVey. Now, Antoine LaVey was the founder of the first Satan church in America. And his first church that he founded was in an old hotel in California. If you listen to that song knowing that that's what he's singing about, the song takes on a whole new meaning. said, I can't get out of here. And once you get into Satanism, it's the hardest thing in the world to get out of. He said, this spirit has not been here since 1969. 
Satan worship is as real as real could be. And on this day, it is a day when they are powerfully doing what they can do to make it happen. The Halloween season, millions of Christians will encourage their children to pay respect to the devil and his gang of evil spirits. They will have their kids dress up like them, and they'll call it cute. What blows me away, and I have seen this personally, thousands of churches will many times have turned their churches into haunted houses. The one down here in Owensville a few years ago had a haunted house inside their church to raise money for a mission project. Mark Snowden told me this week when I was visiting with him in his office that he was part of a college ministry. And that college ministry turned their dorm into a haunted house to raise money for missions. And then they realized after a few years what they were doing. And Mark said when he was asked to be a part of it, he said, I want nothing to do with it. And they stopped doing it. We glorify ghosts and jack-o'-lanterns and other evil things. Halloween is a celebration of darkness, my friends, and don't ever forget that. Halloween is the glorification of an angel called Lucifer who was thrown out of heaven to become what we know today as the devil. The whole concept behind Halloween involves death, darkness, deception, fear, and pagan rituals. We could tell you so many stories about the customs that they have that you would not think about. For example, many of you have fallen in love and probably have them in your house all over the place, a thing called the jack-o'-lantern. Now, Pastor Bill, what in the world could be wrong with the jack-o'-lantern? I guarantee you, most of you have a jack-o'-lantern inside your house. Do you know what the jack-o'-lantern was for? They made a jack-o'-lantern with that face on it, the evil face. We now have them with a smile, but the evil face for the purpose of doing two things. Number one, to scare away the evil spirits. It was put on your front porch for the purpose of scaring away the evil spirits. And number two, the purpose of it was to capture the evil spirits inside the jack-o'-lantern. I don't know about you, but I don't want evil spirits around me to have anything to do with what I do in celebrating my Lord. Many Christians consider Halloween to be a very uncomfortable topic. But what do we do with the witches and the demons and the vampires and the blood and the darkness? Let's look at some scriptures. I promise you, you would have scriptures. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Start with me, if you will, in verse 8. For you, he's talking to us, were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Stop there for a moment. For you, all of us, was once darkness. That's when I was what? Lost. When I was not a Christian. I was in darkness. I was away from God. You were, all of us were once there. But now that I've been saved, I am in the light of the Lord. All right, let's go on. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit... It is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of these things which are done by them in secret. So you hear what he's saying to us? You were once children of darkness. Christians, you are now children of light. 
walk as children in light and have nothing to do with the darkness anymore. If Halloween simply is a child celebration, a night of good, innocent fun, should we think about the idea of glorifying Satan and his evil angels? Do I sound like an extremist? Some of you might think so. Present-day Satanists and witches shall consider Halloween to be their holy of holy days. I want you to understand what the Bible teaches us. Let's go to Luke chapter 22. This is a very interesting passage. Luke chapter 22. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'll give you a few moments to find it. Chapter 22. Look at it. Verse 31. Verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brother. Now, Jesus looked right at Peter, who's Simon. Simon, Simon, you're one of my key apostles. You're one of my key disciples. Satan has asked for you. Satan wants to take you and sift you and make you as weak as can be so that you cannot be used by the Lord. But Simon, I have prayed for you that you will avoid this, that you will get through this and become stronger than you have ever become before. I have jokingly said, and I really think more and more in my life that it's not a joke, I have said many times that I am convinced that I am probably on the top ten list of Satan. If there's anybody that Satan would love to destroy... He would love to take me down. He would love for me to make a mistake. He would love for me to do something absolutely wrong that would destroy my reputation and destroy my ministry. I have been so blessed by the Lord. I have 28 young men who surrendered to the ministry under my ministry that are preaching all around America today who call me all the time. They are my preacher boys. They were in my youth group. And God is using them in a magnificent way. And if I was to blow it, the impact it would have on those boys would be amazing. And I know that. I had a mother come to me one time. She had a son by the name of John. We called him JT. J.T. went everywhere I went. When I preached revivals, wherever I went in youth work, J.T. always gone. His mom and dad were not saved. And J.T. loved the Lord. His mother came to me one day in church. She came to see us perform a, a youth musical. Church was over with. And J.T.'s mom was standing in the foyer, and I was walking out. She said, Pastor Bill, can I talk to you for a moment? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, Pastor Bill, if you were to tell my son to jump off the top of the building my son would jump off the top of the building. I kind of laughed. And so I promise you, Mrs. Taylor, I'll never tell your son to jump off the top of the building. She took her finger and pointed it right in my face and said, don't you laugh. Did you hear what I said to you? If you told my son to jump off of a building, he'd jump off of a building. That's the impact you have on my son. Don't you ever forget it. Changed my youth ministry. I never saw anything like that before. And I realized where God had placed him. God has told me many times, Bill, Satan would love to sift you. Satan would love to knock you out of the pulpit. Satan would love to knock you down. Because if you go down, 
It will impact a lot of people. That's what Jesus was saying to Peter. Peter, take this serious. Take this serious, Peter. You see, Satan is not a joke. In my mind and my heart, he's real. I'm not afraid of him, not a bit. Get thee behind me, Satan. I knew when this week was coming up, I'd have a rough week. I knew that, and we have. My wife and I always prepare ourselves because I know I'm going to teach Bible study on it, and I'm going to come out without any hesitation. But the Bible clearly states that God is the world's highest authority, but right under him is Satan. Don't ever, ever, ever underestimate who he is. Ephesians 6, 12, you don't have to look it up. Let me read it to you. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in these heavenly places. Satan was the first person to openly defy God, and he did it when he was an angel. He started a way of life that is self-centered, a way of life that totally, totally rejects any of God's authority. He marked what is we know of today, the birth of sin, which is nothing more than a rebellion against God, destroying the world and destroying so many people with it. And one of the most tragic things that happens with sin, sin is every day it sends thousands upon thousands of people to hell. And we should not be concerned about darkness. Your opinion, you do what you need to do. The reason why I do not celebrate Halloween the way the world does is because it does honor Satan and his demons. God is not honored during this holiday. In fact, God is not even mentioned during this time of the year. All you hear about is Satan, witches, and demons. The Bible teaches us very plainly and clearly that they are our enemies. And we should not dress up or be like one of them. He is the prince of the world. He is the prince of the power. We need to understand that Satan's purpose is to make war with God's people. He knows he can get us to follow him when he's winning the battle. Go back to the Old Testament with me, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 14. This is when Satan was kicked out of heaven. Go to verse 12. Give you a few moments. If you don't find it, just listen. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground. You are weakened of the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will be better than God, is what Satan said. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation and on the further side of the north. And I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will be like the most high. What's Lucifer saying? I'll be like God. Yet you shall be brought down to hell to the lowest depths of the peace of the pits there are those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying is this the man who made the earth tremble who shook the kingdoms who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities who did not open up the house of the prisoners throughout the entire bible he has always been the number one enemy Satan opposes anything that God does in this world. He discouraged believers. 
through various stages. Danny and I were counseling Charlie. He's going to be baptized here in a couple weeks. And I was sharing with Charlie about what baptism was all about, how it came about, how we got our name as Baptists. And, and Charlie was just listening very intently along with his parents were listening. And then Danny said to Charlie, Charlie, do you care if I say so something? Or he said to me, do you care if I make a comment? And I said, sure, Danny, go right ahead. And Danny, I hope I paraphrase you in the right directions when I think I am. If I did, you can sue me later. But Danny said, Charlie, I want to tell you something right now. You have just accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you're getting ready to live in a brand new world. But when you did that, Charlie, you need to understand you invited Satan to attack you. As of right now, you are one of Satan's enemies. And he will do everything he can to cause you not to walk a Christian life. And he'll do everything he can to mess you up. And I was saying to Danny, amen, amen. Because, my friends, that's exactly when you become a child of God, Satan will do everything he can. Now, watch. This is interesting, and I think I need to say this. I'm a Christian. I know Christ is my Savior. Can Satan ever get me and take me to hell? No. I could do something really wrong. Is that going to send me to hell? No. Then why would Satan get me if he can't take me where he would like to take me? Plain and simple. His whole purpose is to take me out of commission are you listening to me? So I don't win anybody else to Christ. He may not, he cannot get me, but he can stop me from getting a lot of other people for Jesus. Does that make sense? That's why he attacks us. That's why he wants your testimony to be miserable. That's why he does all he can to stop us. God has given us the power through Jesus Christ to win this battle. But I want to tell you something, friends. I don't want to play around with it. I take what happens in the dark world as very serious. So therefore, I do not want to give its leg in my door of my house. My kids know as long as they lived in my home, I have no control over them once they leave. But they know as long as they lived in my home, we did not. We did not do anything that glorified Satan. We did not. Because I would say to them, babes, I do not want to invite, because I believe in evil spirits, I do not want to invite those evil spirits in my house. You sit around on a Ouija board. Ooh, that's fun. You're inviting evil spirits. You're inviting evil spirits. I don't care what you say. They're real. You want to play around with them? Don't take them lightly. Another reason why I don't celebrate Halloween the way the world celebrates Halloween it puts my children in a strong, compromising situation. Halloween, in my opinion, desensitize our children by exposing them to violence, death, mutilation, and gore. Now, I know in this day and time, games do that. I know that. They do the same identical thing. Satan just uses a different tool. And all of a sudden, as you're exposed to them and you glorify in it, you are desensitizing your belief if they are real. Adults and children line up to buy tickets all the time to go to haunted houses to absolutely scare you to death. We all know they're sadistic. We all know they're demonic. We know they're bloody. We know they're violent. We know everything about them does not have anything to do with our belief as Christians. And when you expose people over and over again to this thought, you make them sensitive that it becomes a game, that it's not real. And we need to understand that a Christian family is strongly under attack today. And more than anything else, Satan would love to create havoc in our homes. 
so he can undermine what we try as parents to teach our kids about Christ. Let me give you a couple reasons why we should be concerned with what we're doing on this holiday. I don't want my kids to underestimate the power of the devil. I don't want them scared of him because if they're Christians, they don't have nothing to be scared of. Remember, a demon cannot possess you if you are a child of God. Cannot possess you. Please hear what I'm telling you. A demon cannot possess you if you're a child of God. Because darkness cannot possess light. Cannot possess light. But I don't want you to underestimate the power of the devil. I don't want you to be opened up to demonic influences. I don't want you to stumble into the area of the occult. And all of a sudden caught up and can't get out. What I do want you to do is take the Bible literally. What I do want you to do is prefer the light of the gospel instead of the darkness of the occult. I want you to know that it's okay to stand apart from the world on these issues. And I want you to realize how easily you can be caught up. But you can go against anything in the name of Jesus. So if you're so much, Pastor Bill, against what we do, which is a good question. Then what does that leave us in our life? Well, I appreciate you asking. But I think there are alternatives to way in which we can have fun during the fall. I call everything we do is a fall celebration. It's important that our kids do not feel that they are missing out on something. Just because they are Christians. They should know that their God is behind them everywhere they go. And he is almighty. And that he loves them and will protect them through anything they go through. My favorite passage, and I've shared this many times with my children. And I practice it in my own life many times. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I love that passage. What Jesus is telling me, me being in you, Bill, is greater than anything this world has to offer. I urge you to prayerfully consider the facts of Halloween. Consider changing the climate in which our children are being raised. Consider asking your children to participate in a most positive and uplifting celebration. Pastor Bill, did your kids ever go collecting candy? Yes, they did. But they were never allowed to wear any evil costumes. They did cartoon characters, things of that nature. But they knew why their dad did not want that to happen. God wants us to engage in our culture. Not ignore it. Not to be extremist where everybody thinks we're so weird they want nothing to do with us. God wants us to engage our culture. We cannot be Christians who live in a bubble. Yet we need to find positive ways. For example, Pastor Bill, do you have pumpkins at your front door? Well, I don't now because I can't carve and our kids are gone. But have I in the past? Yes. Carved on our pumpkins were crosses. Christian crosses. Carved on our pumpkins were Jesus saves. And we would put our candles in it. My kids got to decorate their pumpkin. Just like everybody else got to decorate their pumpkin. The only difference is we were careful what we decorated it for. And we talked about that. And to this day, if you drive to my daughter's home, who has two of my wonderful grandchildren, you'll see the pumpkin sitting on her front porch with Christian emblems. Because that's what Dad always taught us. I want to leave you with one final passage as we close. Philippians chapter 4. Everybody get to this one because I want you to see this one. Philippians chapter 4.
If you will, go with me all the way down to verse 8. I apologize. I knew I should put that on silence. All right. Verse 8. Finally, brethren. Now stop there for a moment. Every time you see that word finally, that means I've been teaching you about a lot of things. He's been teaching you about prayer. If you read up to the first part of chapter 4. He says, finally, brethren. Now keep in mind, every time you see the word brethren, every time you see the word brethren, he's not talking to the lost world. He's talking to us as Christians. So when you see the word brethren, that's me. When you see the word finally, he's saying, I want your attention. I'm going to sum up what I've been trying to teach you. All right, what do you want to sum up? Whatever things are true, Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue or if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you have learned the things which you have received, the things which you have heard, and the things which you have saw in me. These do, and the God of peace will be with you. Why do I share these things? So that you will have something to think about. Something to pray about. Something to ask God about. How you celebrate Halloween? It's your business. I am not the Halloween police and will be by your house to see how well you did. I will never ask you I just give to you the Word of God. And now you are responsible for what decision you will make with it. Father, we love you. Thank you so very much for this time together. Thank you, Father, for the power you've given us to overcome the evil world. How you've given us the possibilities, the probabilities of having power and peace and joyful life. I am so thankful how you have watched over me and my family so many times. I have no fear, for I have God. But Father, I never have ever underestimated the power of Satan. I know he's not happy tonight, and that's okay. As a matter of fact, I hope he gets up every day worrying about me. Because, Father, we've come here to fight the evil. And on this few days left until Saturday, may we ask ourselves, who are we glorifying? And we promise we'll give you the praise, all the honor and all the glory. For it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much for being here tonight. And I pray that God has taught you something. I've enjoyed teaching you. And may God bless you and have a great week. God bless you. Thank you. You're dismissed.